Hey everyone, um, I hope everyone is well. I've been asked quite a lot about setting up kitbash libraries. Um, I do a lot of kitbashing when it comes to my 3D models, which is a case of essentially taking 3D assets, using them like Lego pieces, mushing them together until you get something weird and wonderful, um, hopefully. So yeah, I, over the last sort of couple of years, have put together my own kitbash library and I wanted to just, yeah, divulge a little bit of information about how you could do the same thing um, and ways of organizing it and, um, yeah, things that you can do to kind of make your life easier. So let's have a quick look. Um, so, yeah, this is it. This is my library. Um, it's made up of all sorts of random things. Obviously, as you can see, they're categorized um, and they're also categorized here in the um, scene collection so um, it didn't take a huge amount of time to do that and I think it's worth keeping on top of that stuff I'm not a particularly organized person generally um, but when it comes to trying to work quickly this kind of stuff can make a huge difference so yeah I kind of named everything it's incredibly over engineered um, because this kitbash library is available on my patreon for people to download I kind of went a little bit um, further in terms of just making sure it was easy for people to sort of navigate and look around and so they knew what they were getting um so that's essentially why this is kind of laid out in the way it is i think if it was just for me maybe it would be a little bit more disorganized and now especially because i have the asset browser and being able to organize things again inside there um this is probably overkill but i think it's a good visual thing to look at i think it's useful when you kind of want it to work quickly um you know wanting to know kind of what you have there available to you um, it can't hurt at all so um, in terms of the way that you break these things up it's totally up to you like I have you know a lot of sort of like creepily technological bits um, kind of random things here you know like the industrial stuff and like these objects that I've made that um, a lot of which were in floaters and stuff like that um, so yeah when it comes to categorization you can break that down as much as you want and it depends on the kind of things that you're making so I've not gone insane like I've yeah tried to group things up as much as I can um, and then in terms of like this you know this grid system is just a, a square block with a um, uh, wireframe modifier on it which is just these lines um, so yeah that's kind of super easy to do uh, just made it glow just so it was obvious on the black background um, but yeah often like I won't necessarily need to see any of this rendered because um, I know what the things are anyway. Um, like I have got materials in here as well. Um, again, with Asset Browser, you can probably get away with not having to do that now. But um, in terms of like making asset, uh, like Atlas materials to use with Dream UV, um, yeah, I, I find it useful to have these here. Um, so that's good. Um, yeah, so I, like in terms of the way that I put this stuff together, obviously it's just stuff that gets... Um, built or 3D scanned um, as I'm going along because often I'll need something and it'll be like okay well it's worth me spending half an hour you know you take these antennas for example um, it was worth me kind of sitting down for an hour and making these because I knew that they would add quite a lot of real estate um, so you're kind of looking for things that you, you're seeing a theme in terms of if you're making lots of cityscapes for example then buildings are going to be something that's you know just basic building shapes are going to be really useful to you um, and yeah if you're doing spaceships um you know greebles panels and that kind of thing so um yeah there's no sort of like logic really necessarily in terms of like me going okay um like i'm gonna make sure i've got this asset for something that you know i may need in the future often it's just a case of like oh i need it for that specific thing and then i'll kind of go from there and make it and then add it in here um yeah, so I think it's a really good way of working. Like, it's, you know, a really quick way of, you know, adding detail. It's really the secret to, like, if you want to kind of create a piece of art in, you know, less than a, an afternoon, um, really it's the kind of the only way of doing that kind of quickly, I think. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of swear by this, this method, and it's kind of even from, you know, the 60s when they were building spaceships, kind of the, the techniques haven't changed hugely. Um, just now it's digital so yeah I think it's a really fun way to work um, 
but yeah, I'd love to have a look and you know see see what other people suggest about how they're putting their libraries together. This is just the most sort of visual way I could think of doing it. But um, yeah, I'd love to hear how other people are doing it. Um, and yeah, like I say, this library, if you don't have time to put your own together, this library is available um, on my Patreon. So um, yeah, feel free if, if, if you're interested in this kind of thing and tutorials um, that aren't up here on YouTube because they're a little bit long and tricky to sort of like boil down. Um, then yeah, that, that's the place to be. But um, yeah, I hope this is in some way helpful and yeah, it, it kind of informs the way that you kind of put your kit bashes together in the future. Thanks for giving it a listen. <laughs>